up next uh, now uh, we have a special session which is called turn me on building your personal brand customer attraction is the million dollar question for business owners and here is here to answer is jerome joseph who is the ceo of the brand theater worldwide he is an award winning business brand and uh, customer experience strategist and a global speaker focused on brand strategy brand engagement internal branding personal branding and branded customer experience his list of achievements is truly inspiring as are the insights that he will be sharing with you welcome to the session uh, jerem and it's over to you thank you hi everyone and greetings from singapore i'm so excited to be here so i'm i'm going to you know when when i first wrote my first book um, in, which was called turn me on in the very first line of the book i had the sentence that said if you bought this book thinking it was about something else i'm sorry to disappoint you so what is turn me on turn me on is really about how you can turn on your personal brand so i'm going to quickly share my screen and so to make sure that the panelists if you could just confirm with me if my screen is being shared panelists just want to double confirm this just to make sure that my screen is being shared if you could just let me know that would be great good i'm i'm assuming it is so i've not heard anyone so good so let me move on and i've got about 30 to 40 minutes with everybody and i want to make sure that we give you value so today's program is really going to be about how you can build your personal brand in a time of crisis i'm sure many of the other speakers have done this but i'd like to take a quick moment to pause and and pay respect to the people that are currently fighting the crisis uh to pay respect to the people who are currently affected by the crisis well for once you know me i'm really looking forward for when this is over i'm really looking for the time when we don't have this crisis but in any situation right it's important that we now need to be very strategic about how we can build our personal brand during this period so a little bit about me i've been doing this now for 23 years i've spoken i've consulted i've coached in over 34 countries as of date and i've worked with over 1000 brands all around the world i've written eight books and i'm ranked number 2 in the world as a global thought leader now i'm sharing this with you not to boast but to talk to you a little bit about social proof which we'll talk a little bit later on when we talk about personal branding so let's given the time that i have let's get straight to it so my first point to everyone everyone is on this call is very simple you are the ceo of the brand often i when i when i coach people when i talk to people when they meet up with me they always goes um, but I, i'm not sure if i'm i'm a brand and i go yes you are you are the brand the day you were born and you are the ceo of your brand and this is a belief that needs to start with all of you what you say or what you do is a reflection of what you stand for and it's truly my belief that every single person alive is a brand and just like you have your product brands your service brands the interaction the connection what you say how you connect how you speak is a reflection of what you stand for So the kick things off I'm going to play a little game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask three questions and I know there are participants and I won't be able to hear you live if I'm doing a, a keynote. But I want you to answer and and we're going to play a little game and and, and we're going to ask you three questions. The the winners will get a copy of one of my books. So let's start with the first one, the first question. True or false? And you can say to yourself and I trust everyone <laughs> the more you are seen as an expert in the industry the higher the chance of people doing business or recommending you true or false I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think of the answer good I'm sure everyone's got an answer the correct answer is true now this data that we're putting in front of you was done by a survey where we spoke to over 500 personal brands all around asia and and the data has indicated to us that the more you're seen as an expert the more the more your brand is stronger the more people want to do business with you so the answer is true so let me ask you the next question true or false people are two times more likely to buy from or work with personal brands they trust true or false give me a couple of seconds Good. 
The correct answer is false. People are four times more likely to buy from or work with personal brands they trust. Research that we, 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 that we did indicated to us that people are four times, four times more likely to buy personal brands that they trust. Number three, people that develop and use a strategic personal brand communication plan have a higher top of mind than 78% of their colleagues or competitors. Couple of seconds, true or false? Well, the answer is true. When you develop and use a plan, you stand to be top of mind. If you're working in an organization, you are top of mind, you know, above your colleagues. If you are, you know, an entrepreneur, you're top of mind, you know, this or this your competition. But the problem today that I see is not many people actually invest time in building a plan. They have this, what you call this shotgun mentality where they go out and they go, oh, social media, let me do social media. Oh, boom, boom, boom. And, and they go out and they try to do everything. And you can't. One of the things I'm going to talk to you a lot about is the need to have a clear strategic plan that will help you guide your communication in the marketplace. So I promise you this, whoever who played, if you answered and you got, you got at least two correct, I am going to give you a copy of my book. So it's very simple to get your free book. This is what you need to do. You get to my website, jeromejoseph.com slash coaching. You just have to fill up your name and the copy of my book, Stand Out, 30 Principles to Grow Your Personal Brand will be given to you. I normally charge for this, uh, but I really want everyone to get a copy because this is a time where we need to support each other. Speaking of times, we all know that this is a crisis. When I was young, I had a crisis. You know, I was working in my first job. I was 16 years old and I got fired at 16 years old because I was late for work. And my, my grandma, and I live in Singapore, by the way. So, you know, in Singapore, you know, Chinese or Mandarin is, is common in this part. And my grandma knew a little bit of Mandarin. And she said to me, she said, Weiji. So what does Weiji mean? What does Weiji mean? Basically it means the Chinese word for crisis. It means both danger and opportunity. So we all know, and I'm sure people have talked to you about this, that where there is a crisis, there is also opportunity. And I want to prove it to you. I want you to think of some of the, the personal brands that you know who when put in moments of crisis, how they have risen from the crisis. Let me give an example of, of one of my favorite brands, Nelson Mandela, placed in a crisis, placed in a crisis of appetite policies in native South America. But guess what? Despite the crisis that was, that was, that was um, um, clouding his country's legacy, he created a personal brand that stood out and embraced peace, selfishness, and reconciliation. And he led South Africa to a lot more harmonious future. So it's someone that in the face of crisis rose because of the brand strength of his personal brand. Let me tell you someone else. This gets a lot more debate whenever I show this speech because there are people who love her and there are people who hate her. But let me tell you something. We have a climate crisis, like it or not. And Greta, her personal brand is really rocketed the message of climate change. Not only has she gone out there and, and talked about, about you know, saving the world and saving climate, she has captured attention of people her age to the cause, where for years, climate scientists have struggled to, and she has done that. So in every crisis, there is opportunity. But, and there is a but. I'm gonna to come to my but in a short while. This is what I want you to do. I want you to think about what your brand stands for. So for example, maybe if you, if you coach or speak on leadership, your brand could be about transforming leaders. If you are about, you're a business coach, your brand could be about, about impacting businesses. So I want you to think of what your brand stands for. And, and I want you, wherever you are, in the comfort of your sofa or in your, in your, in your bedroom or in your office, when I count to three, I want you to shout out the word. Shout out the word of what your brand stands for. So everyone got this? So on the count of three. 
and I'm going to virtually hear you, right, from all around the world. On the count of three, one, two, three. Good, I can hear 400 plus people saying their brand out loud. But let me tell you, this is what you sound like to me. And that's the but. If you look at this shelf space, all you see is a crowded, crowded shelf where there are discounts and there's so many things that are happening. And that is the reality of the marketplace today. There is a lot of competition and we've always had competition, but in the moment of crisis, people start getting a lot more desperate. People start getting, you know, people start discounting significantly. People start doing things that, that just to be heard in the marketplace. And that's the challenge today. It's always been a challenge, by the way. It's always been competition, but it's never been as aggressive as it will be in this period and in the coming months. There is a plenty of competition. And you, you and you are the 400 people that are on this, on this call. You are this shelf. You are shouting to be heard. You are shouting. You want to be heard. You want people to pick you and buy you and, and, and embrace your services. But that's a challenge. How do you, how do you stand out in your marketplace? And, and it's, it's crucially this, right? How do you engage with the people that you're in? And in the basis of what I do and what I impact organizations, I tell personal brands, this is brand new. What you stand for, how you communicate, what differentiates you, how credible you are, how you connect, this is key. This is key in the crowded marketplace. If you don't get this right, you would be that shelf, probably right at the bottom, where someone walk past and ignore you. And you can slash your price all you want. It's still not going to help. I do this, and I've been doing this, as I said, for the past 23 years. And this is our signature solution. We go into organizations, and I do a few things. I speak, I do keynotes, I do personal brand workshops, I coach leaders, entrepreneurs, executives, um, I specifically even focus with salespeople on their social selling and personal branding. I also help businesses end-to-end -end with their own branding. And of course, I have an online program that's coming up. I share this with you because it is very, very important in this day and age to be able to have a brand that you know what it stands for and the kind of solutions that it's going to give to the marketplace. And I'll talk to you a little bit by sharing with you the model that we use. Now, in the next few minutes, I am going to share with you three things from a typical personal brand plan. I've talked to you about personal brand plan. I do not have the time to take you through our framework where we go into with organizations and create this framework for them. I'm going to spend and give you three strategies. The strategies are going to be in three areas. Number one, I'm going to talk a little bit about developing strategy. Now, there are plenty of tools and templates that I have in each of these five Ds but I'm gonna give you one quick idea that you can start to use in developing my strategy, in delivering your message, and in terms of driving your brand. So time is precious, so I'm gonna get cracking. So let me start with the first thing, the developing strategy, the developing principle. Action without strategy is aimless is something that I always tell business owners. I would probably easily say about 60 to 70% of business owners that I meet, especially with the small, medium enterprises. This is what they're doing. They pump in money on Facebook, they do posts, they maybe would do some Google ads and they, and they hope and they pray that it hits, that someone would buy them. That is what you call action. And what I'm telling you to do is before you go and do that, You've got to have a strategy in place. Now, for those of you that, that know me or may have heard of me, you, you, know, you probably know that I travel a lot and I post videos and pictures from, from all around the world. So I want to share a point of time when I was speaking in China and I got back from China. It was, it was I was speaking in Shanghai at a business keynote conference. I traveled back and I landed back in Singapore. This was a Tuesday. And I landed back in Singapore on a Tuesday late night at midnight, and I'm driving, I'm driving on the streets of, of, of Singapore, and I reach back home, and then I realize 
that there were hundreds of people running around the room. Sorry, running around the roads. And I'm like, what's going on, right? This is in the middle of a street in Singapore, right next to my home. And there are hundreds of people. And there were young people and there were old people. And they seemed to be running around. Now, if those of you that have been to Singapore, this is a, this is a working night. It's a school night. It's Tuesday. It's midnight. People should be sleeping. So, of course, the first thing was, what's going on? I mean, is there a fire? Has Singapore been invaded? What's going on? So I get out the car and I approach an elderly gentleman. Now in Singapore, we are very respectful. I'm sure it is in India. We say uncle. So I saw this, this 70 plus year old uncle and I go up to him. I go, uncle, uncle, what's going on? Why is everyone running around? And this uncle, he looks at me and he says, Aya, poke man, poke man. And I'm like, what's, 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 uh, what's, what's going on? What's going on? What do you mean poke man? Who do you want to, who, which man do you want to poke? What's going on? And he looked at me and he shook his head and he says, Aya, poke man. And then he showed me his screen and it was a phone. And on the phone, he showed me this. So it wasn't, Poke man, it was Pokemon. And this, this was amazing because at that point of time, I saw, I saw hundreds of people running around, young and old, chasing an imaginary creature. Of course, it was about two years ago when Pokemon Go was at its peak. But there is a lesson, and one of the things that I, that, I, that I teach and I talk about is that there are a lot of lessons from the best brands in the world. So let me tell you what the lesson is. Let's look at the Pokemon brand. Now this is, is where they are at. The Pokemon brand, they have video games and trading cards, media, merchandise, licensing events, concept store, mobile apps. It's amazing what they have done. The question I have for you is this, what are you doing to extend your brand? What are you doing in this climate to be able to extend your offerings. Now, I often tell people that there are a few things that they can do, and I'm gonna show it to you in a, in a simple example. So if you look at this, this is a simple chart of, of what brands are doing. For example, there are brands who work on pricing and they, and they create a price segment for a new marketplace. So Tata Motors is in frugal innovation. I mean, that's a great market that they captured. You look at Netflix and look at what they have done. I mean, they have, I mean, today everyone's watching Netflix and they've changed the way you distribute. Now think about promotion and look at what Copenhagen has done uh, with the Copenhagen Zoo and it's great creative communication. And think about Zoom. Why is Zoom number one in the world? Now I use Zoom, um, you know, over the past three years, but in previous times I was using a platform called WebEx and with no, you know, without being disrespectful to WebEx, I struggle with the platform. What Zoom did is they made the user experience so much more easier. So the question is this, what are you doing to innovate your brand during this period? So one of the things that really is very important is as you think about your strategy and develop your strategy, what are you doing? What are you doing to ensure that you are able to compete in this marketplace? What are you doing from a price perspective that you can look at new segments? Now, remember, one of the things that I share with a coaching client of mine is that there was, there was selling, there was selling um, a program. I said, hey, because everyone's at home now and there's a lockdown, is there an opportunity for you to maybe have a husband and wife promotion? What are you doing to create new products? And I know plenty of speakers and coaches are going online, which by the way, it's, it's now going to get really saturated. What are you doing to be a little bit more different? Where, is, where are you doing business at? If, if shops are closed, where do you want to go? How creative are you in the way you promote? So for me, that's extremely important today. The, how you extend your brand, how you look at new segments, how you diversify is crucial for a business in this climate. We are going to struggle. I mean, many of you down here are coaches. So you're going to struggle. It's not going to be easy to get clients. So I'm asking you, what are you doing from a strategic perspective that allows you to innovate your offerings, your brand, and put it out there in the marketplace. It doesn't have to be a new service, it could be a new way and looking service. So that's my first point, developing a strategy. So let me tell you my, let me share my, my second point, delivering, deliver principle. I have a lot of respect for this man, Mahatma Gandhi. And I love what he said. 
my life is my message. I'm going to say it again. My life is my message. That, that sentence has been an inspiration for me in my own career. Everything I say or do is a reflection of my brand. Today, with what's going on with the virus and what's going on with, 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 with countries, I've seen typically two types of people. One group of people I, I see are the ones that are educating and supporting and providing love and positivity. And on the other hand, I see a group of people that are critical. You know, your keyboard warriors, they get angry and they are, they're out for war. What kind of person are you? Because I truly believe the crisis is going to be over and people are going to remember you by your message. What does your message say about your personal brand? I'll give you a case to point. This was an incident that happened in Singapore and it was, was a welfare manager, a wealth fund manager that was based in Singapore. And this was not even recently. This was like two, three years ago. And, and he drives this great car, but it so happened that his car was broken up, broken down. So he went on the train with his son where he wrote, Daddy, where's your car? And who are these pe poor people? Because he took public transport. And when he finally got his car back, he wrote, ah, reunited with my baby. Normal service can resume once I wash the stench of public transport off me. As a result of this post, it, it, he received a lot of backlash and essentially lost his job. The question I have for you is, what are you doing to post your message? What are you doing to deliver your message? So today I'm going to give you two quick things that you can start to think about. Number one is a content plan for the week. Now this is a, it's when I run my workshops and when I do my, my consulting, I guide people in how they develop their content calendar. And that's a whole strategic exercise in itself, content marketing. But I'm going to give you a quick tip. I call it the 2 to one Now this is a guideline. You don't have to follow it to the core, but it's a good guideline for you to start doing content marketing. Two shared content. Find things that are, that, are, that are aligned to your brand, aligned to your brand, aligned to your clients, aligned to your community, and share those contents. Two, create original content. And a big part of this original content is to inform, educate, entertain. And finally, promotional content. The biggest problem that I see is people who do nothing but promote themselves. For me, that is an issue. If you spend every day doing nothing but promoting and promoting and promoting yourself, your community is going to be put off. Do it smartly. Now, I promote myself for sure, you know, but I find ways to do it indirectly and I ensure that it's done potentially within, you know, every, once every five days or even once sometimes every two weeks. The second thing that you need to start thinking about when you think about content is you need to look at content that you put up not just on social platforms, right? It's the emails, the forums, your videos, and all this, this is all content. I want you to start thinking about content across the buyer funnel. That means what are the kind of content that you're putting out to create awareness? What are the, what are the kind of content you're putting out when people are kind of are looking at options and analyzing or comparison? What are content you need to put out when you want, when people are ready to buy? And this is extremely crucial when you start thinking about content marketing. So let me go to my third and final point for today. The drive principle, the credibility amplifier. One of the things that I tell people that I meet with and I talk, it's very important that you show proof. And yeah, I use the word social proof that people can believe. It is very important that people are able to believe in your brand. If you remember this, the, the, the game that I played earlier, where we, we pointed out that trust was a very important factor in personal branding. And I'm stating it again, trust is extremely, extremely crucial. Being able to show credibility in the marketplace is important. Now, when I work with, with my coaches or with, or with organizations, I have what I call a credibility amplifier. I'm, I, there, this is just some of it. I have a list of 52 credibility amplifiers that I help different individuals and organizations amplify their brand. For the purpose of today, I am going to share a few of them with you. So let me start with the, one of my favorites and something that I did at the start of the program. This is a credibility amplifier called credibility by volume. 
So to tell trust, I mean, this, I took this off the internet and this was um, a financial planner who talked about 1,000 happy clients in 10 months. Now, if, if you were paying attention to my introduction when I showed you a slide, you would realize that I use this. I talk about my years of experience. I talk about how many countries that I've been in. I talk about the number of brands that I've worked with and the people that have listened to my message. This is important to me. On top of it, you didn't realize I put my books, I'm number two in the world. So this is an example of how you would use a credibility amplifier where you will indicate numbers. And numbers are very powerful. And the research has shown that numbers are very powerful. So this is one method that I use. The second method is, is the second credibility amplifier is, is awards. It's media mentions of awards. On the left, you will see that this is an article that came out in the Singapore Straits Times that was written by me. Because of this article, I closed a very lucrative six-figure project because of the article. Because so the article came out and I took it and I shared it. And of course, other people saw it. On your right-hand side, I mean, this year, you will see the date. It's 4th of February. I was recognized as the number two global brand thought leader in the world. And I'm the only Asian from Asia to be given this recognition. I put it on social media. Because of the post, I had, I had lots of comments, lots of shares. But what's more important to me is the credibility that I got because of this. As a result of this one, one post, I closed two consulting clients, six-figure deals, and I was able to close keynotes and workshops because of one powerful post, a post that's credible. Now, there are a lot of people that I know that say stuff like, I am the leading person in the world. Says who? Where did you get your proof from? If you are able and if you are leading, tell the world the proof. Point, point, to, the, point to the world. I'm leading because of this. Now, I've been given this award and it's a recognized award by the Global Gurus Association. I use it because it's been given to me. So use what's been given to you and make sure that you amplify that. Now, I'm going to give you a third thing. The third thing is recommendations. It's, it's very underrated. But I can tell you now, in the work that I do, now, people pay a lot of money to hire me for keynotes, for coaching, for workshops, for my consulting. To do that, it's very important that I'm able to show my testimonials. If you come to my LinkedIn page, you'll see a whole bunch of testimonials. And on my, on my YouTube, I probably have about 20 or 30 video testimonials. But I can tell you now, in my, in my own in my computer right in front of me, I probably have about 100 testimonials. So every time I meet a client and I'm engaging with the client and the client needs to see further social proof, my video testimonial goes out to them. And this, again, is another way that you can amplify your credibility. Let me give you one more, one more. This is about thought leadership. And there are four things that we need to talk about when it comes to thought leadership. That's a, way, it's a, it's a good friend of mine, Gautam Ganglani, if you know him, he's, one of, he's, he's from Right Selection, they're a speaker bureau. I work a lot with him. And over the years, I've become good friends with Gautam and I've gotten a chance to really interact and, and, and work with him. There are four things that you can start to do now. Now, the challenge that we have is, is, is when we go out there, you know, there's many people like us. What differentiates you in the marketplace is if you have a level of thought leadership in your space that you can prove to people, hey, guess what? I've researched this, I've done this. Now I've written eight books and that's a big thing for me because I use those books as a big part of thought leadership. Gotham, as you see in this picture down here, he uses uh, his book, which he just recently wrote to also talk about his thought leadership in the space. I use a lot of LinkedIn positioning. Please add me by the way, when it comes to LinkedIn, and you can see that I use my LinkedIn to really position my brand. I speak a lot at big events. And I do a lot of thought leadership videos. For me, this is extremely important for you to do. There are many ways you can put thought leadership. But remember, thought leadership means that you have created something or you have remodeled something or you have, you have something to say that is different from everyone else. If you are able to show this thought leadership and package it in a way that people appreciate you will stand out in this crowded marketplace. 
you would see this is the, this is my book on, on the, the brand playbook which is my eighth book that i released recently and again the book has done wonders for my brand and how i've been positioned that's my linkedin profile and you'll see my youtube page and of course me i speak a lot at events i do about 100 days of programs a year so this allows me to be to be seen and, and, and thought of as a thought leader. So today I shared with you three things that came from my 5D plan. And, and of course, it's a very detailed plan, but I've given you three quick tips. Number one, I talked to you about developing your strategy. I talked to you about the need, specifically when you think about strategy, the need to innovate your brand in this, in this crisis. I talked to you about delivering your message and in a crisis, it's so important that you are consistently giving out your message. But please remember that your message is a reflection of your brand. And number three, I taught you about how you can drive your brand. Why is it so important that you are able to drive your brand through your credibility amplifiers? There's a lot of ways that you can show social proof. And I gave you four quick tips on how you can do that. So before I conclude, I would love for you to connect with me. If you have any of our things that you would love help in, be it coaching, keynotes, workshops, and, I'm, I'm, and, and of course, you know, please, I'm going to be releasing an online program soon. I would love for you to be part of it. Now, I want to end with a little quick story for, for everyone to kind of share. Right? So the story is very simple. The story is this. Over the past few years, I've worked with different organizations and, I've, and I've, I've seen many people suffer. I want you to say that there is hope. There is hope. I know that times are tough, but really remember, please make sure that you know, the personal brand is key. And it's very important for you to really invest your time in building your personal brand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerome. This is uh, Tabish here. We just had one, uh, you know, quick question for you. People have people are are, are writing back asking sure. for your book. Sure, it's here. So this is screen. Can you How do we? Answer? Yeah, if you can just leave this on for a little sure. few more seconds so that people can figure sure. out how they can have it. Yeah. Okay. I think this was extremely, extremely useful, Jerome. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll uh, pass it on to Satyam. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome, for uh, uh, accepting our invite and uh, sharing your insights with our audience today. It was a pleasure to have you. And as a token of appreciation, we have a small certificate. We'll be emailing the copy to you uh, to just a gratitude to say that. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of our. Thank you.